Hello. In this video, we're going to discuss the stress strain diagram and also a force displacement diagram. Before you, I have a stress strain diagram. Notice the stress, notified by sigma, is given on the y axis in pounds per square inch, and the strain, notified by epsilon, is given in inches per inch because it's the change in elongation divided by the original length of the material. Before we look at the other type of graph, let's point out a few important points on this graph. You have four major points on the stress strain diagram. Number one is the proportional limit. Right here at the end of the linear part of your graph is the proportional limit. And then just past that, right before we get to the yield point, uh, right before we get to the plastic range, is the yield point. And then here at the very top of the curve, this is called the ultimate tensile strength, or UTS. And this is the most oops, tensile. This is the most stress that the material can take. And then here at the end, finally we have strained it so much that it breaks apart and this is called the breaking point or the rupture point. And this is where we experience failure of the material. So these points are important to us. They tell us a lot about the different types of material. The example I've given to you here is, the bra is for brass. It's important to understand whenever you're given a graph that you look to see if it is stress strain, but it may be a force displacement diagram as the one I've shown here, force versus displacement. At the load displacement curve, force or load, this can also be called load displacement curve, um, suffers from the disadvantage that it would vary as the sample size is changed. So the curve is normalized to make it independent of sample size. So a force displacement curve would look different if your sample size were thicker in diameter or smaller in diameter. That's why we like to compare the stress strain curve because it has um, been divided so that the sample size does not matter. When you're given a force displacement curve or, or a stress strain curve, you should look to see if it truly is force displacement or stress strain. If you notice load displacement or force displacement, then you need to change it over to be stress and strain. In order to do that, we're going to need to know the original length of the material, and we're also going to need to know the cross-sectional area. Usually, that's going to be given to you in the problem. So my cross-sectional area is 1.18 inches squared, and my original length was 1.25 inches. And that's given to me in this problem. So now I'm asked to find the stress at the proportional limit. So I can't just look and say 110,000 pounds, here's my proportional limit, letter A, because this is a force diagram, not a stress strain diagram. So to get stress, we need to do force divided by area. So I look over here at my force at my proportional limit, and I find it to be 110,000 pounds. And I'm going to divide by my cross-sectional area, which was given to me as 118 or 1.18 inches squared. And then when I divide this out, I get 93,220 pounds per square inch, or PSI. Now it's asking me for the ultimate stress. So again, I find stress. This is stress at the proportional limit, so I'll put stress of P. This is going to be stress at UTS, ultimate tensile strength. That again is the force at the ultimate tensile strength divided by the area. So the force, ultimate tensile strength, is represented by letter C, is 165,000 pounds. And I need to divide by my cross-sectional area. 
When I do 165,000 pounds divided by 1.18 inches squared, I get 194,700, because my precision, um, pounds per square inch, or PSI. Now, the last part is... Uh, it asks, starting at the origin and ending at the proportional limit, calculate the modulus of elasticity for this material. Show the formula and numbers used to arrive at your answer. So, modulus of elasticity, capital E, is the stress divided by the strain. Well, if I had a stress-strain graph, as in my other example, I can just do this number divided by this number. But that's not what I have here. I have a force displacement curve. So to get the stress, I have to do force divided by area. And then to get the strain, I have to do the change in length, or the displacement, divided by the original length. So multiplying by the reciprocal, because I have a fraction divided by a fraction, this leads me to force times the original length equals the area times the displacement. That's going to be the formula that I will use. So the force, uh, again, at my original proportional limit is zero, so I only have to consider the points here at the end at my proportional limit. The force is 110,000. The original length was 1.25. The area was 1.18. This is pounds. This is inch. And my change is this amount right here for displacement. So it's on the x-axis, 0 0.078. These inches reduce out. And when I do the math, my answer is 1 million, my modulus of elasticity would be 1,493,910 p. SI pounds per square inch, or if you're doing um, kips per square inch, remember you can divide out by a thousand. That would be 1,494 kips per square inch KSI. So just remember to pay attention to your graphs and determine whether you have. Make sure that you're watching to see if you have a force displacement graph or if you have a stress strain graph. Stress strain graph, you can simply read from the graph, but the force displacement graph, you have to change it to stress and strain by dividing by your original area or your original length. That's all for today. Thank you.